Okay, so now let's look at group seven elements. So group seven elements are over here and you have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acinine, and this one at the bottom, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. Uh, but essentially, we need to know what happens when you go down the group over here. Now, we saw already what happens when you go down the group in group one, but in group seven, you see a slightly different trend. As you go down the group, the molecular mass increases, the melting point increases, and the boiling point also increases. But the key fact here, the activity decreases as you go down the group. And let's have a look at why that happens. So group seven atoms, we also call halogens, and they all have the same structure, okay? So no matter whether it's chlorine, iodine, bromine, or whatever, group seven elements always have the same outer shell structure. They have seven electrons on the outer shell, and to react, they always want to gain an electron to form a full outer shell. So their reactivity depends on how easily they can gain this outer shell electron. And much like group seven, that depends on the distance between the nucleus and the outer shell electron. So when that distance is larger, the attraction between the electron they're trying to gain and the nucleus is is smaller so they they are less reactive so the idea is then that if you go up the group the period number decreases and when the period number decreases the distance between the nucleus and the outer shell electron is smaller and therefore the the attraction is greater and the reactivity increases okay so that's why the reactivity decreases as you go down the group because the opposite of that happens now one thing we can notice these are all diatomic molecules so they always form cl2 i2 or br2 when they're in their natural molecular form okay so they always form these molecules with with a two like that and there you can see uh, an explanation of what's going on as the distance increases it's harder to gain that electron so they become less reactive now we do need to know how halogens react with non-metals so when they react with non-metals they tend to share electrons they form covalent bonds and they form these compounds uh, which are molecules when they react with metals on the other hand they transfer electrons instead of sharing electrons and they form ionic compounds and whenever they form the ionic compounds the ions in the ionic compound they always have this I minus, C L minus, B L minus, they are always the one minus ion in those compounds, okay? And the last thing we're going to look at is displacement reactions. So when you have a more reactive element and you react it with a salt made from a less reactive halogen, then that more reactive halogen will be able to, to displace the less reactive one. So here, chlorine is more reactive than iodine. Because chlorine is more reactive when, than iodine, then even though iodine is already reacted in this salt here, potassium iodide, you can see what it will look like as ions. When you react it with the chlorine, the chlorine kicks it out, takes its place in the salt, so it becomes potassium chloride instead, and the iodine, iodine is displaced and is basically just uh, dissolved then in the solution. And the way you can tell displacement, if a displacement reaction happens is that the color actually changes. So if you look over here, we've got the reactivity of chlorine, bromine, and iodine. These are the main ones you'll deal with. The chlorine is the most reactive. It will be able to kick out bromine and iodine. Bromine is the next reactive. It will be able to kick out iodine, and iodine is the least reactive. It won't be able to kick out bromine or chlorine. But the color of the solution will change depending on what element is free over here. So here, because we've got iodine free, the solution will actually turn yellow because iodine is yellow. If bromine is free in the solution, it will turn brown. If chlorine was free, it will turn green. Okay, so at this stage, the solution would be green and then it would turn yellow as the iodine is displaced and replaces the chlorine. Okay, the chlorine and the iodine switch places. So that is displacement reaction. So let's have a quick quiz now to recap what we've learned. So here's the quiz, feel free to pause the video and have a go and come back to check your answers. So question one, would bromine be able to displace chlorine? Well, we can see in our reactivity series, bromine is below chlorine, it's not as reactive, therefore it would not be able to displace it. So here we can just say no. Question two, what type of compound is created when fluorine reacts with a non-metal? Well, when a halogen reacts with a non-metal, they end up sharing electrons because they're two non-metals reacting and therefore you get a molecule, okay? Form a molecular compound. So those are the questions. Hopefully that all makes sense. And I'll see you guys in the next one.